Hi guys, myself Ashok, working as a Java consultant. Today I am going to discuss one interesting concept called debugging. As part of this session, we are going to understand what is debugging, who should know this debugging, what are the advantages of knowing the debugging, and what are the differences between debugging and testing. Then we will see how to debug standalone application and how to debug web application and what is the variables what are the variables and what are the variable views and what is this drop to frame in this debugging first let us see what is debugging very simple debugging is the process of finding and resolving defects or problems within a computer program that prevent correct operation of your program so that means being a developer we are going to work on some projects uh, that can be a scratch development project or it can be a maintenance project as part of this development we are going to create so many classes like controller classes or service classes or repository classes as part of those classes we will write some lines of code and once we complete that code we need to check whether that code is working as expected or not can we guarantee our code will work as expected in the first attempt itself absolutely no so there can be a number of reasons like null pointer exceptions or a index out of bound exception or file not found exception or some other problems and it can be there can it can be any reason but we need to identify that reason and we have to fix that problem why the program is not working now the question is I have written thousand lines of code as part of one requirement in that thousand lines of code which line is giving me a problem I don't know so I need to go to each and every line I need to check why that particular line is giving me some problem and how to fix that problem so how you will identify or how I will identify which line is not working as expected and what is the problem it is causing so that's where we are going to use this debugging mechanism to identify which line is not working as expected then we will fix that problem within that line now so as we discussed that debugging is the process of finding and resolving the problem within your program so every developer should know this debugging so it is a mandatory skill for the developer because it helps the developers to identify the bugs and it helps the developers to fix the bugs as well now you can you may ask a question when we are writing the code why we don't know that line is not going to work we cannot guarantee that and even if you do the code review also we will not identify that problem in that code the problem may occur only in the specific conditions so that's why we have to debug the program to identify what is the problem then we have to fix the problem and not only to identify the problem or not only to fix the problem uh, when we newly joined into a project we don't know how the application flow is going to execute and we don't understand how the loops are getting executed and what is the business logic is happening in that application so in that situation also we can use this debugging mechanism to understand application execution flow and some people will use this debugging to perform the unit testing also once they complete some unit piece of code as part of the development uh, i hope you got it what is debugging in the high level i'm repeating once again debugging is the process of finding and resolving defects or problems within a computer program it is a mandatory skill for every developer and it helps us to identify the problem and to fix the problem and it helps us to understand it helps us to understand what is the application execution flow which is going to happen as any application when we newly join in that application and next uh, if this debugging is used to identify the problem and to fix the problem then what is testing these both are two different concepts completely uh, the main purpose of testing is to find a bug the main purpose of debugging is to find root cause of the bug uh, testers proves programmers failure and debugging makes programmers perfect testing is done by the testing team that debugging will done by the developers team 
and testing involves only identify a software defect without its correction but debugging is a deeper process than testing debugging involves identifying isolating and fixing the bug as well next uh, we know what is debugging now then next question how to debug uh, where we need to debug as we are using IDEs to develop the code that IDE is helping us to debug a program that means IDE support is there for debugging so what is the procedure we need to follow to debug a particular program first step choose which program which method you want to debug and in that program choose a breakpoint from which line you want to start that then run that program in the debug mode it will ask for a perspective confirmation pop-up or choose yes for that then we can continue the debugging using some shortcuts provided so let us see visualizing part uh, how to choose a keep a breakpoint so first i am going for a sample program in this fifth line i want to debug here simply i am keeping a breakpoint is here right click on that mouse uh, mouse right click you can get this first option toggle breakpoint or you can use a shortcut control plus shift plus b as well so this is toggling a breakpoint in the particular line then after keeping that breakpoint then i need to launch my program in the debug mode so most of the times people will use this run as java application but here right click on that program choose debug as java application this is launching the program in the debug mode then when the program is execution got started when it reaches to the line where the breakpoint is added it is going to stop at that line it will not continue the execution then how it's programmer responsibility to continue that execution by using keyboard shortcuts what are the shortcuts available to control execution flow we have f5 f6 f7 f8 shortcuts to continue the execution f5 steps into the call that is getting inside the method f6 steps over the call that is going to the next line f7 step return coming from calling method to caller method then f8 resumes the execution or it will reaches to the next breakpoint so a high level f5 f6 f7 f8 remember these keywords we will dig into the details how exactly these keywords are working when i show you a program you will get the clear picture on that fine next uh, theoretically we understood what is debugging and what are the advantages of the debugging and procedure of the debugging now let me demonstrate this procedure by taking one standalone application now here I have created a sample calculator application to perform arithmetic operations. Just for our understanding purpose, we will see how this debugging is helping us to understand the execution flow. First, let us take our main class is a calculator which is used to perform arithmetic operations. Here I have added four methods for addition, multiplication, subtraction and division. Now, these methods I am going to call from another class called test app which is having a main method now i want to debug this uh, calculator application but that calculator class we are not executing directly which doesn't contain a main method main method is available in the test app class now first i'm choosing this is the method i want to debug so to de start this debugging first choose a breakpoint and this is the line which i want to start my debugging procedure at this eighth line i am double clicking this that is toggle breakpoint i'm keeping breakpoint at the eighth line then uh, launch this program in the debug mode right click here we can see an option debug as java application it is a standalone project so i am choosing debug as java application click on that now it is asking for confirm perspective switch i'm clicking yes before clicking the S, once observe the view of our Eclipse IDE, then after clicking on S, we can see that the perspective style is going to change. I hope you guys see this structure now. I'm clicking on S. Now you can see this is called debug perspective. 
now i need to continue my execution because it got stopped at the breakpoint at line number 8 no i want to go for next line to go for the next line the shortcut is f6 i am pressing f6 now edit it to this line this is calling another method call addition by using a object c c is a variable which is holding calculator object that means we are calling addition method from the calculator class i want to go inside this method to go inside the method we will use a shortcut called f5 i am pressing f5 from my keyboard now see we entered into this f5 here we can see this method signature it is taking two parameters of integer type one is variable a another one is variable b we can see what are the variables are passed to this method as well in the variables view a is 10 and b is holding also 10 now here it is performing a plus b and which is storing it to another variable called result and again go to a next line that is using f6 now you can see the result just i am keeping my cursor on the result variable which is displaying as 20 that is sum of these two numbers a plus b is 20 so we can understand how this program is executing line by line now if i click f6 return result it will go to the color method now add result here you can see add result is 20 that means same value is displaying in the variables view as well next f6 and it is printing on the console because of this SOP statement next again we are calling one more method called multiplication then i want to go inside this method f5 now here also you can see a holding 20 b is holding 5 the result which is 100 now f6 here we can see multiplication result is 100 which is printing on the console same way another method is there now f5 here we can see the result a minus b is 5 result here now here i am keeping one more breakpoint at the 24th line now from the sub result i don't want to debug these lines directly i want to jump into here so to enter from one break to jump in from one breakpoint to another breakpoint directly we can use a keyword f8 keyboard shortcut f8 now when i press f8 this lens execution completed and we reach it to this statement which is printing on the console the division result is 4 now my program execution got completed f8 that's it. the program got terminated we can see here so with this we we have seen how to start a debugging of a standalone application and how to use those shortcuts so as part of this debugging the shortcuts we have used f5 f6 f7 and f8 so f5 to go inside the method f6 to go to next line f7 to come back to the caller f8 to resume the execution or to go to next breakpoint no. let me take one complex program to debug then we will understand these keywords better now here i have one class where i'm starting my debugging let me enable these breakpoints now here i am using debug as java application Here we can see at the 50th line the program execution got stopped because there is a breakpoint. Now in this main method we are calling one more method to go inside this method. What is the shortcut? F5. Now I entered into this method here F6, F6 like this to go to the next methods. 
here we can see for this object what values we are setting this is called executing the program step by step so programmer will have the better understanding how this program is getting executed now here we are called creating object for some other class and we are calling that class method that is generated document now i want to go inside this method f5 is the shortcut here again we are calling one more method how to go inside this method again we will use f5 now it is entered into predefined load class method come out come back to the caller who call this method what is the shortcut f7 now here we came back to this line got executed now i want to go for next line f6 f6 here here some if condition is available now some r operator if this condition is satisfied then only will enter into this now we will see how this condition is getting evaluated f6 condition got satisfied we entered into the if condition then like this i can execute my program line by line again here we are calling one more method to get into that method we can use f5 otherwise simply if you want to continue without going inside that method just we can click f5 that method execution got completed we came here now f6 i want to see what is the value in this print mode variable just keep your cursor here we can see false value now like this f6 now we entered into some other class and one more method is getting executed here we again we are setting that value by calling some other method if you want to really understand what is getting executed here you can keep you can click on f5 to debug this particular method if not simply f6 it is taking time to complete the next method execution once that method is completed we have to stop here came here now f6 like this directly if i want to go for this breakpoint then i can use f8 shortcut here now let the console directly if i want to enter here f8 we came here now i want to see what is the value available here now so but simple i want to check what is the value is giving by this getter method select this one just i want to see what is this value coming here now select this one Control shift i it is giving this fs slash tf that means programmer can see what value is coming here whether this condition is going to satisfy or not now f6 that condition got satisfied this variable we are making as a true again we can see this whether this condition is getting satisfied or not this also got satisfied this value also became true here we are making a db call we can see here what is the value we are getting this cargo is empty or not it is not empty in this cargo it is an array which is having one object now see here whether this condition is going to satisfied or not you can select this control shift i true condition is satisfied now get into this now you can see what is the date coming here now 1 10 2018 then we are setting to another object now is this condition is going to satisfy is snap true is raw true true and true the result will be true so we'll be entering into this if condition so here application specific logic we are writing now see this is not getting satisfied because it is not null this record is having some this array is having one record so condition not satisfied this value did not set here now again as this if is already satisfied these two conditions are not are going to execute directly we are coming here like f6 f6 now just i want to complete my execution simply click on f8 now we came back here here we are having generate xml converting java object to xml f6 here we can see that xml string got generated so you can see that xml string if you really want to see what is there in that xml you can go to the variables palette you can check that this is the xml value right click on this one uh change value here you can see that xml value select this copy you can copy this control a control c 
you can copy this XML and you can paste wherever you want to analyze that XML. Fine. This is called debugging the program step by step. So I hope you understood what is this shortcuts here. F5, F6, F7, F8. F5 to go inside the method. F6 to go to next line. F7 to come out from the caller. F8 to continue the execution or to reach the next breakpoint. Fine. Again, let me debug the same program once again. We are going to see some more concepts here. What is drop to frame and how to change the values of the variables. Uh, let me run this program in the debug mode again. Right click debug as Java application. It is taking time to load the classes which is required to run this program. As it is a main main class execution begin from this main method here we have a breakpoint at this particular line. currently this method is under execution once that is done program execution will stop at this line because at the 50th line we have a breakpoint Yes, it is got stopped at this breakpoint. Now this is another method. Now I want to go inside that method. What is the shortcut to go into your method? F5. I am pressing F5. Now enter here. Now here you can debug line by line by using F6. Now suppose I want to re-execute this method again. Then right click on this. Here we have a drop to frame. Before clicking on this observe once again, we reach it to 96 line. Now the method got started at the 89. Now I want to restart this method execution. This can be a scenario when I am debugging a method which is having some 30 lines of code. I reach to the last line of the method. But still I didn't understand what happened in the method. One, what is the problem available in that method. I am unable to figure out. Then instead of stopping and rerunning the program on the fly, I want to rerun that method. That's where we can use this drop to frame option. Clearly here you can see in this method currently we are at the 96th line but I want to start from here again then go to this debug perspective see what is the stack frame currently test IS255 method is getting executed I want to re-execute this method from first line so right click on this method choose drop to frame now you can see here it is came to here now again F6 from the first line it is getting executed now I don't want to debug these lines. I understood these are only setter methods to set the data. I want to go for my next breakpoint. Just simply we will use a keyword called F8. I am pressing F8. Now it will go and stop where is the next breakpoint. This is that in the another class from this initiate correspondence class we came to 255 assembler class because here we have a breakpoint. Now if I want to continue from here simply f6 now if you want to understand these methods execution also then we can use f5 to go into that method otherwise f6 to go for next line if you want to go for next breakpoint we can use f8 if you want to go back to the caller then we can use f7 just taking time F6 now directly I want to go for another breakpoint here I kept another breakpoint 70 directly I want to reach to the 17th line 70 line then what is the shortcut F8 I pressed F8 here at the 60th line also we have a breakpoint so it stopped here only from here F8 directly we stopped here because in the previous execution I understood what is happening in this piece of code. Now I don't want to debug again. That's why I directly jump to the 70 line by using that F8 keyword. Now 
now one important thing we need to see here variables here we can see the variables are there is a snap is true is RIW is true every time these values are coming at true but now I want to check what will happen or how my program will behave if these variables are false so how can I check that simply we can change the values of these variables in this variables palette how to change simply click here it is giving to as it is a boolean data type we have only two options otherwise if it is a string we can enter the data manually now I am choosing as a false value for this snap so now is a snap is holding false value previously it is holding true now I change it to false value because I want to understand how my program will behave if that variable value is false so this is also one important thing that developers should know when they are debugging a program now f6 now here previously this condition got satisfied now is snap is holding false so not satisfied is snap is true or false false it will not execute now is raw it is true only this piece is getting executed previously this part got executed now i want to see the behavior what will happen if the false snap value is false so simply I change the value of the variable here only now simply f6 now i came to here if i want to re-execute this method again do i need to stop and do i need to restart from here no simply we can go here we can use option called drop to frame this is one technique developers will use when they are debugging a program to have a better understanding on the execution so so with this we know how to change the values of the variables and we know what is this drop to frame option and we know what are the keyboard shortcuts as well so guys i hope now you got what is debugging what is debugging it is a procedure of executing a program step by step to understand how the program is getting executed and it helps the developers to identify a problem in the program and it helps the developers to fix the problem as well and it will helps the programmers to understand execution flow also if you are new to a system then how you will understand how the code is executed by debugging that program we can understand that so how to debug we have to choose the breakpoint then launch the program in the debug mode it will stop at the debug when the debugging it will stop at the breakpoint then we have to continue the execution using these shortcuts f5 f6 f7 and f8 and when we are debugging sometimes we need to see values of the variables sometimes we want to change the values of the variables just now i have shown you how we can change the values of the variables using this variable palette and what is the drop to frame what is drop to frame when the program is under execution if i want to re-execute that program from the first then we can right click on that and we can choose this drop to frame option good this is how we are going to debug a standalone application now i want to show you how to debug a web application also first let me go into je debug jwe perspective switch here i have a web application which is used to perform basic card operations here first uh, how i need to start debugging of a web application first uh, right click on that application which you want to debug then use an option called debug as debug and server generally people will use run as run on server now we are going to debug as debug on server now choose the tomcat any server we can use now i have tomcat server with me i am using this tomcat server Let's wait for a few seconds. Uh, application is going to launch. Oh, we have simple application here, uh, which is used to perform basic operations like adding a book data, viewing the book data, search for the book data. Now here I am checking adding a book name just debugging 
ISBN sum double zero seven and book price hundred. Simply click on submit. Now, as already I have your breakpoint here, it is asking for the confirmation pop up. Yes, now. So this is the actual method which is calling for that. Here I am calling book service dot insert. Insert is a service layer method. How to go inside that method? F five. Now you can see in the service layer we are getting the data in the form of a model object. We are converting that model object data to entity object. F six. Now it is calling the DAO layer method and which is returning some value to the controller. Now in that controller we can see is inserted is true. That means record card inserted successfully. If it is true, then success message is going to display to the end user. Now I understood how this data is inserting into your table. Now I want to continue that execution directly. F8. Come to that application. We can see that got displayed as a success message. So whatever the record is uh, stored into the DB, is it displaying in the next tab or not? I want to check. Simply click on View Books. Now, for the view books also, I kept a breakpoint at this 55 line. We can see that it is executing first F8 directly. I'm clicking on F8. See here, only three records are displaying here. Do we have the debugging book here? No, debugging is not there. Now I need to understand why that debugging book is not displaying here, which I added just two minutes back. Fine. So now, can we understand this? Yes. So first. Again, click on this view box. Come here. F6. Here I am trying to fetch some value from the request scope. ISBN. Keep the cursor null. ISBN not available. Then, if the ISBN not there, it is reading all the books from the table. So I am calling a service layer method. I want to see what is happening in this service. F5. Now, here it is calling the DAO layer method. Simply, if you want to debug the DAO method also, then you can click on that F5. Just if you want to go to the next line, F6. Now, I have executed the DAO method here. Now you can see that that query is also printing on the console. Select data from the book store table. Now, copy this query, execute in the database. Let's see how many results we are getting. I am opening my SQL developer. So guys, still my program is under debugging mode only. I am analyzing why that debugging book is not displaying in the front end. So this is one way of identifying root cause of the problem. Now go to database. Uh, here, as already we have a query, simply execute that query. Now we can see that there are so many records are total. Right click, count rows. Fifteen rows are available here, but in the front end we have seen only. Three records got displayed. Now we'll see how, why. So if this entity's collection is not empty, I am preparing one more collection for the front end. But here we can see that one condition is there. What is that? Entity dot get active switch. If it is why, then only we are displaying. Uh, good guys, this is concept called uh, uh, soft delete operation. Generally, when we are working with applications, we have to do some delete operations, right? Uh, delete we can do in two ways. Uh, one is soft delete, another one is hard delete. If you perform hard delete, that means record will be deleted permanently from the database. But that is not uh, recommended if it is a bit important data. In some situations, people will prefer soft delete. What do you mean by that soft delete? Here in this table. We are maintaining one uh, like let me show you normal table with all these alias columns. Select a star from table name. Now here we can see that ID, active switch, ISBN name, price, create date and update date are there. Here that means active switch. By default, when the records got inserted, they will be one. Now when anybody wants to debug this record, that switch will be no. And in the front end. We are displaying the records only which are Y. That means they are active records. Now go to the here. We can see this debugging, but the debugging active switch is not inserted into the DB. It is a null value. But if it is Y, then only we are displaying in the front end. I hope you understood what is the problem. So when the record got inserted, active switch column is not inserted. That means this is null value. 
But when we are retrieving the data, we are retrieving the records which are having active switch is equal to Y. So we got and we understood what is the root cause of this issue. Then is it difficult to fix that issue? No. So now we need to check at the time of insertion what is happening. Go and check here when we are adding a book, inserting a book. Here we are setting the data for name, ISBN price, but active switch is commented here. That means for the records which we are inserting, active switch is not inserting into the DB. So they will not be displayed at the time of retrieval. Now, let's uncomment this line, save this program. Uh, if you want, we can redeploy this application. Uh, let me redeploy. As we have done some code changes, let me go for redeployment. Uh, changing the perspective to JWE. Stop this application. Again, do we need to run our debug? Debug mode. Debug as debug and server. Choosing the Tomcat finish. Service starting. So, let me Let me redeploy. Debug as debug and server. So it's taking more time than usual, increase the time editor. No. I ran that application using embedded server or Tomcat uh, now. now. Let's see. Uh, whether our whatever the book we are adding is it displaying in the front end or not no. so add book at this time I am adding debugging new just for our understanding ISBN 008 book price 150 click on submit as we have this uh, debugging breakpoint it is stopping here now we can see that is inserted through F8 now stored successfully click on view books this time also as we have a breakpoint it is displaying here simply f8 i want to see in the front end now this time we can see debugging new book we added is getting display here now if i simply if i click on this one again view books again it is stopping at this breakpoint now i understood my problem got fixed now i don't want to debug this program again now i want to disable the breakpoint 
sorry guys to disable these breakpoints we have one option here skip all breakpoints <coughs> click on this one now f8 we got the data here no again if i click on view books as the breakpoints got skipped we are directly getting the result without asking for us to use the shortcuts in future again if i want to enable the breakpoints simply click on this icon here now our breakpoints are enabled you can see this symbol is displaying here now if i click on this one that is with the strike code symbol so that is disabled same button to enable as well as to disable the breakpoints now with this we understood how to debug a web application as well now, uh, this is what we have seen their variables view so to see what are the variables are getting created here and what are the values they are holding and we can change the values of the variables as well that is a variables view next one uh, simple variable structure view and change the value that already we have seen when we are debugging the standard application same thing is applicable for web application as well next one drop to frame if you want to re-execute that method uh, at some point of time then we can go for this drop to frame option uh, with this drop to frame future you have the possibility to go back to your java stack frame where you have been before it often happens to be quite often that i am debugging and then missing that point where i have to pay attention with the drop to frame future i can then rerun that code again but we already have seen what is this drop to frame Here simply we are showing that the uh, procedure to start the web application in the debug mode. Right click on that application, instead of the run as, choose the debug as, debug as server or debug as a Spring Boot app. If it is a Spring Boot application, we can use this option. Now, next, uh, one important concept uh, here is remote debugging. So, uh, whatever the debugging we have done for standalone and web application that is local debugging that means code is in my system application is also executing my system then suppose in some situations application is executing in some other system code is in my system now I want to debug for that we need to go for this remote debugging future uh, I will prepare one more video on this remote debugging with uh, more details uh, for time being uh, I am just uh, you I am skipping this for high level idea if any program which is running in the another virtual machine or in the another computer we can debug from our system that concept is called remote debugging how we will do this remote debugging is whenever we use debugging this option we need to choose uh, in which machine that program is executing and what is the port number of that program then we can start this debugging debugging mechanism for that fine in future we are going to see in very clear with clear picture what is this remote debugging how to debug your application which is running in the other machine fine guys uh, if you have any questions on this uh, you can get in touch with me uh, this is my facebook group uh, you can post your queries and uh, this is the url of that group if you have any personal questions uh, you can send me an email my email id ashok.java training at the gmail.com uh, thank you guys uh, i feel this session is helpful for both of us Thank you.